Hi, my name's Nicole Pates and I'm a paediatric physiotherapist from Western Australia. I'm here today to help you give your little one the best start to life. One of the most common questions that I get almost every day is when do I need to buy shoes for my little one? When do they need to start wearing shoes? And what should I look for when I'm buying my little one's first shoe? This is a pretty reasonable question. I mean, their feet are a lot different to our feet. What do you mean, Nicole? Well, you know, our feet are pretty cool. They have 26 bones, 33 joints, and over 100 muscles. But baby's feet aren't the same. They're still growing and developing. It's not hard bone yet. And what helps make that bone over time is movement and muscle work and practice getting up and walking on their feet. So our little baby's feet are squishy and flat and, you know, they have fat pads in them that absorb like a lot of the shock when they first start standing up. And that is completely normal. It is completely normal for your little one to have flat feet. Over time, what we see is that that arch as your baby learns to use the muscles in their feet and get up onto their feet and walking and walking on different surfaces, you know, out of the park, on the sand, those muscles will work and that arch development will occur up, up until the age of six. So once your kid's six, you'll know what their arch is gonna look like. And you know what? It's also perfectly normal for adults to have flat feet. They say about 20% of the population have flat feet and flat feet does not mean that you will have pain and problems later on in life. That's a big myth, but that's a myth to be busted for another time and another day. So thinking about that, putting shoes on our little one, well, that changes the way they use their feet and it changes what they can feel. And I really prefer barefoot as much as you possibly can because those feet feel everything and they're sort of the windows to the world for your little one once they get up and walking. They, that's their sensory system. So they can feel you know, hot, cold, um, they feel the changes in the balance of the surface, so whether it's even or uneven, and that changes the way their body works and their muscles control how they're standing. So barefoot is fantastic for helping your little one discover their balance and get better at walking and running and squatting and stairs and moving and doing all the love and jumping and doing all the things that they will grow to do over the next few years. It's really exciting. But, you know, it also, there comes a time when you have to wear shoes. So one of the biggest questions I get asked is when should I put shoes on my baby? Probably the first time that you have to wear shoes or you ne your baby needs to wear shoes is probably not the best to be their first time because if they're like my kids, I've got two little ones that are now three and six and they let them go barefoot and run wild the first one. Anyway, he hated shoes and it was really hard when the concrete was hot or it was really cold or it was sharp ground. And so, you know, when they we need shoes for protection. So please make sure the first time that you need shoes is not the first time that you wear shoes. Make it fun. When they're young, have them around, you know, put shoes on, take them off, make it a little game. It's really, it's a really fun way to introduce shoes without the pressure of having to wear them. So when it does, so, you know, if, say if they're crawling around, they're starting to pull up to stand, you know, cruising, maybe taking their first steps, that might be a time that they need protection in their environment where they might be, you know, at the park or on the hot concrete or you don't know what's around. And so you think, hmm, I'm going to be, I'm going to use the shoes as a protection here. And so that's the time when you might consider buying your little one's first shoes. Sidetrack, some people say, oh, but they look really cute in shoes, like a book the little Nikes for my baby to wear, you know, at three months old. That's totally fine. Like the amount of time that you spend, they, your little one spends in that Nikes as you go off to, you know, coffee or breakfast or out for dinner with your, to your family house, or whatever you're doing with your little one, you know, they might spend like half an hour in those shoes before you take them off. And so, you know, and most of those shoes are very wide and very spacious and don't, and they're not putting weight through their feet. So they're not impacting development. That's perfectly fine. Please don't stress about that. You know, buy the cute shoes if you want to. Coming back to learning to crawl and stand and walk, that's the time when you might think about buying shoes for protection. So, what do you what what do what do I think, Nicole, pediatric physiotherapist? Well, I think there's some things that you can look for in a shoe. So, 
there's sort of five things that I think about when you're looking to buy a shoe for a crawler, a pre-walker or a new walker. So you know new walker up to in that first sort of three to six months that they've started walking. And the first thing is that they're flexible. I'm gonna show you a shoe that I do love. Um, if you wanna know more about the brands I recommend, we, I do that in um, my subscription. So the Baby Play Academy, which is an online development program for parents with little ones and it has not just movement tips, so like motor milestone classes on, master classes on rolling, walking, crawling, and even from the newborn stage about how to carry and hold your baby for newborn development and best development. Um, but it also has like 250 play ideas all categorized to your baby stage, um, talk tips, a baby sign master class. Um, and bonuses on introduction to solids and um, other really cool things and you know monthly play ideas that we release so it's a really cool subscription it's only $29 a month you can check out more in the description and while you're here just like this video and subscribe I have really good stuff coming out on my channel all about this baby development and um, products for your bubs and how they might actually help and how to play with toys as well so there's going to be lots of good stuff coming here so Make sure you hit subscribe and turn those notifications on. Anyway, back to what we're looking for in a shoe. So this is one of my favorite brands for a new walker or a pre walker or a crawler because they're priced really reasonably. I think they're about 30 to $40 a pair, which is pretty reasonable considering and they fit my five categories. So the first thing that I look for in a shoe is that it's flexible. So this is a shoe, it's called a Vel Vel to these, I'll also tag them. I'm not an affiliate, um, I just really love these shoes and they're actually made by Pediatric Physio. So for this age category of crawling, new walker and pre-walker, this is what I love. So Vel to these. So flexible. Flexible is the scrunch test. Remember that your baby's feet are the window to their world and help, will help with their balance and their sensory system development. So you want their foot to move as naturally as possible. So flexible is the scrunch test. Can you scrunch up that shoe and have this sole completely flexible so that your baby's foot will move as naturally as possible? So that's the first thing, it's flexible with the scrunch test. So tick, velvety's. And flat, your baby's foot is very flat. I know that some people out there say, we like a little kick up at the toe because it makes it easier for them to walk. Do we want to make it easier for your little one to learn to, like, to push off or do we want the muscles to do the job? That one doesn't sit well. I actually like a flat, flat, flat base so your little one can practice using their own muscles to push off, which develops their arch and the strength through their foot muscles. So I like my shoe, if you hold it up, for it to be flat from here to here. That's what I like in a shoe. Also really want, remember we talked about your baby having really fat, big, flexible, um, squishy feet and your baby's feet shape will change over time, you know, size, width, that arch, everything's changing. So the other thing I like is that it has a wide toe. So if you look at the bottom of this shoe, you can see that this toe box is wider than the heel. And that's really important because we want your little one's foot to spread and to be able to do that push off. So you always look at the bottom of the shoe and is the toe box wider than the heel? That's the third thing. So flexible, flat, wide toe. The fourth thing is I really want it to be adjustable. So this little one is adjustable. So you can make it a little bit tighter or a little bit wider because all of the little ones have, all of your babies, have different size ankles and we want it to be secure around their foot. And that's what really gets me with the sock type shoes. They're not my favorite because they're not adjustable and they get, you know, they stretch over time and we want it to be secure on their feet so that it's not flopping around on their feet. So adjustable, adjustability is really important. So flexible, flat, wide toe, adjustable. And the last one, thin. So you can see here that the base of that shoe is pretty thin, okay? That's really important. It's also, this is made from um, leather, so it's it's quite thin, but also protective from heat. And it's great for your, like, you know, for sweat and stuff, that type of thing, so it will absorb that. So you can see that in here as well. But we want it to be thin, because in this age of your little one learning to walk, 
we want them to feel the ground as much as possible, even when they're in a shoe for protection. So thin but protective is really important. So flexible, flat, wide toe, wide hip toe box here, adjustable and thin. They're the five things that I would look for in a shoe. And you know, there are lots of brands of shoes out there and Veltides are a beautiful brand and a very affordable brand, especially since your little one's feet grow so fast. Um, but you might have more questions like, what about hand-me-downs? Or, you know, what are your favorite brands, Nick? Or when do I transition from this type of shoe into something with a more firmer sole? Or, you know, what about new walkers to more experienced walkers to toddlers? Like, what does that look like in a shoe? Well, I answer all of those questions in the Baby Play Academy. I will come onto my channel here on YouTube in a couple of weeks and compare some different shoe brands for you. Um, however, my favorite ones are in the Baby Play Academy. I hope today was helpful in what to look for for a new shoe for your little one and for your first shoe. Um, excuse me, that is so exciting having buying your first shoes for your little ones. So make sure that you do love them as well and that they're great for your kids. So I do find that these come in lots of colors and are really pretty. Like here's some pink ones with little laces that you can do up for adjustability as well. And you know, they're a little bit more warm for winter. So yeah, I do really love these ones. Um, but yeah, have fun picking those first shoes and take away those five takeaways in the shop and happy playing.